We're going to talk about setting the trigger time and voltage. There are the three basic controls for all DSOs. And don't worry about knowing where they should be set for a perfect waveform. We're going to show you how to adjust them to get the waveform on the screen. And use the automatic settings if you have one available. We're going to talk about moving things to the right spot on the screen so you can see them. This is an important issue. So first of all, and foremost, if you suddenly come up and your scope has nothing on it, stop and look. Yes, we know there isn't a waveform on the screen, but look for the voltage scales on the left and right. All we see is a minus 10 in the upper left corner. What is that telling us? Well, on this Pico scope, there's a slider that lets us position this waveform. The slider is all the way at the bottom. What happens if we take that slider and move it toward the middle? As we start up, the scope fuss are appearing, and as we move it fully up, we can see that we have in the middle a full waveform. There are going to be times when someone makes an adjustment, you're going to have to do this. It's going to happen. The only way you're going to get good at adjusting a DSO's controls is to do it. Experience is the best teacher. And changing the controls is not going to harm the DSO or the vehicle in any way. Now let's practice using different channels as a trigger. Now the triggering is the bit determined by what you want to see. If we have a signal on channel A we want to use to trigger, we would select channel A down here in this pop-up menu as you see we've highlighted here on this Pico. We could go down and choose channel B if that had the correct signal we wanted to trigger on. Or we could go all the way down to channel C if that's what we want to look at. Or D. And if we had one of the ATS scopes, we could go through all eight channels. Why do we select a particular channel? We want the one signal at the start of the events, like a crankshaft position signal. But the question we have for you is the signal you want a noisy trigger or an unevenly spaced signal? If it is, you're going to have trouble triggering on it. Use a different channel for a related signal that is tied to the same event timing. We showed you in an earlier example where we used an injector waveform evenly spaced to synchronize an uneven spaced crank and cam signal. That's the type of technology we're talking about. Come back to this website and review all this stuff because it's going to help you make sense out of all of it. Right here, all three vents are related. We have two uneven spaced, one evenly spaced. We chose channel C in order to stabilize this pattern. C is the black injector pulse width. We wanted 720 degrees of rotation. We selected a sweep feed would give it to us, but the triggering became difficult because of the uneven spaced signals. So you pick the channel that's going to give you what you want. That's the point we're trying to make. If you got only one channel, you have to select that channel. If you've got more channels, select the channel you want that will give you a good stable trigger understanding the rules we've outlined. Sometimes you're going to use specialized triggering. The trigger signal can be taken from outside the DSO used to synchronize the waveform to a certain engine or event timing. For one example is number one cylinder firing with inductive pickup. The DSO may have a separate input for an external trigger. Or it could have a sync trigger, usually called number one inductive pickup. If it doesn't, you will have to connect the sync probe and connect the probe to a channel and then select that channel as a trigger. So there's always ways to get this triggered. Here's our example of our number one trigger. We've connected it around this plug wire, which happens to be number one. Now the events, if we select this as a trigger, will be tied to number one cylinder. That is an evenly spaced signal. We can sync from any cylinder event, any cylinder injector, evenly spaced crankshaft pickup signals, evenly spaced camshaft signals, and circuits that change state such as a switch or solenoid. And you can always use an external signal to synchronize things into an event related to a particular thing like engine speed or rotation. Now auto trigger is a good example. It works fine. The DSO samples the input screen, determines the maximum minimum voltage, and positions the trigger at near the midpoint. Sweep speed is critical for normal operation. We have said this before. Auto trigger, auto voltage only works when you have a slow enough sweep. 
that you can get an entire pulse train of several pulses on the screen. So just because you have auto trigger in doesn't mean you're going to get anything if you mess up the sweep speed. Now single trigger is a very specialized situation where it displays one sweep. It's like taking a snapshot of a thing. It's for catching a one-time event. Now it's used as a diagnostic tool for catching glitches and it uses specialized triggering setting to capture an event that is outside the normal range. So if you have something like a voltage is going way too high on rare occasions, set your triggering higher than normal. If it's going much lower than normal, set negative slope with a trigger below your normal signal and it will be able to capture this one instant for you. Very specialized normal trigger. If the trigger is lost, the DSL will not display the waveform or will freeze the last triggered waveform.